This week, the music tech universe exploded. Arturia made a cosmic promise. Did they deliver? And the Clone Wars rage on. Behringer strikes back with budget clones and software scandals. And the community is once again divided. Autotune gets an upgrade, Spotify gets an AI. Is this the feature or receive for disaster? To figure out, time to tune in. Last week, our favorite freak manufacturer from France, Arturia, started teasing something new coming, and all their marketing materials pointed to a universe size announcement. To celebrate their 25th anniversary of being in the business, Arturia made a big deal about how this would be something new. The music production world had their collective breath, and the guesses ranged from a new drum machine to some sort of AI software integration into their platforms. Now that we are in the future, the announcement was slightly slightly less interesting than a lot of people had thought, and it was met with a semi-collective hmm. The Astrolab is 61 key virtual synth that ties to the company's software offerings but in an all-in-one standalone keyboard. If that sounds kind of strange, it sort of is. It is not really a synthesizer, and it is not really a MIDI keyboard, it's more of a virtual software in a box. Using the Analog Lab Pro offerings, the keyboard allows you to play and explore 1300 presets that come from its V Collection series of analog emulations. If you already own V Collection or buy the software, you can add an additional 20,000 presets and integrate the sounds into the device as well. The standalone nature of the device means you don't need a laptop or computer attached to operate it, making you free to roam the cosmos without being tethered to your MacBook Pro. You can split the keyboard into two sections, giving you multi-tumbrel control, use chords, scales, an internal arpeggiator, and even loop and record in the device, and transfer all of this to your DAW once you have blasted off. Adding a mic also transmits signals into the vocoder for additional fun. The question is, who is this instrument for, and why is worth the seemingly high price tag? Just like Dark Matter and other mysteries of the stars around us, the internet didn't have a solitary either. With the price point announced at $2,000, there were out of questionable stares at just who and where the device might land. Arthur is sure hoping that musicians are going to grab one and head to infinity and beyond with them. If futuristic hardware keyboards aren't your thing and you would rather believe the bell button, Disco Boogie Nights this next announcement is probably more your speed. Behringer have become known for their ability to clone both classics and sometimes modern synths at a relatively low price point. The MS5 is another example of their cloning powers. Based on the classic Roland SH5 synthesizer that was released in 1976, the new synth updates this legend with some additional modern features. A 37 key 2 oscillator synth is complete the analog from start to finish on the signal pad, and the two LFOs are even analog circuits. Where things get modern is added MIDI capabilities and signal input, allowing you to take advantage of multi-mode 24 dB diode filters and well-known ring modulator by playing through the instrument. In true Behringer fashion, all of this is available at a reasonable price of 600. We are really a tiny channel trying to make a difference and bring you all the news transparently and without taking a side. If you want to see us grow and come to you with more news like this, please consider like and subscribe and hit that bell button. It really does help a lot. While one can understand Behringer copying and releasing something that is no longer produced and went the way of the dinosaurs, their week wasn't empty of controversy, Behringer. What a big surprise! Also this week, the cloners dropped the software scene on all of our laps for free. The vintage, named after the wine I drank last night, what? That's not right? Well then, it's named after clothing style that millennials are all tooting on TikTok? What? Not that either. Okay, I guess it is just named that for its weird wood styling. Hold on, I am getting a report that people are claiming that Behringer cloned the style from Tonto's Soros plugin. The claims were so great that the Tonto headman Marcus Krauss came out on Facebook and stated, we are not responsible for the graphics, sound engine, or anything else. Having cleared it up, it's time to get back. What now? Oh wow! Boost from you, he has now come out directly stating that the programming on the product is directly from Ableton's analog synth. <laughs> Looks like they're up to their old cloning tricks, even in software form. <laughs> 
<laughs> this is going to get juicy, especially considering that the vintage synth has an icon that states synthsuit. So what's next? Maybe an FM based on FL Studios Stylus? Behringer coming after UFL, run! If you don't have Ableton Analog and you want to try out the free synth, we will link it below in the description where you can get this plugin. If there is anything in music more controversial than Behringer, it has to be the autotune. Autotuning vocals has been around for 20 plus years and have been some amazing uses of it, like Daft Punk's One More Time. There also have been some epic fails like Rebecca Black's Friday. While you either love or hate the effect that autotune produces on vocals, it has become a widely used tool for producers to make sure singers hit that note with precision. I always use it. When I sing, there are three autotunes on top of each other, and I still don't hit that note. Antares has released a new version of Autotune Pro that adds some really interesting features to the software. Now you can tune layered polyphonic harmonies by triggering it with MIDI to create instant four-part vocals with low latency. Each of the harmony parts has 11 different parameters that you can adjust, including form and shape, volume, and panning to add even more separation from the main vocal. Antares has even improved other areas of the software with updating the auto mode and graph mode to make it easier and more streamlined to edit your vocals. All of this magic doesn't come cheap with a 455 euro price tag, so you need to pony up some bills for those extra layers and voices. There are only three guarantees in life, debt, taxes, and Apple iOS having more music making apps than Android. While Android does have a few good music making apps from companies like FL Studio, BandLab, and Roland, it still is well behind iOS when it comes to available options. It is because mobile programmers choose to bypass the most used mobile software on the planet in favor of more friendly iOS enabled phones like Ableton did with their Ableton Note software. There are still some interesting developers working in the Google created space though. One new edition is Polaris, a new pocket operator that can do some interesting things. With six tracks, a sequencer with per step modulations, per track step lengths control to create polymeters, and per step trigger conditions so you can play loops only when you want them to. This software could be good enough to create some interesting beats on the go. There is also a dual oscillator synth engine and a multi-dot filter to add some color to your creations. Of course, samples are provided, but you can also import your own samples as long as you have storage space available on your phone or tablet. The UI is also very user-friendly and stays with the typical Android minimal design style. For just €3.99, this can be worth taking for a spin if you have an Android device and seeing what rhythms you can create on the go. I have highlighted a few DIY devices in the past and we have a new contender for the strangest name product of the year, the Kusoloti. Kusoloti? Kusoloti. Don't know, they just put the names on the screen and I read them. That funny named company released gills, you know, to breathe underwater. Actually, the gills is an open source design that allows you to take their core PSP board product and make everything you want out of it. Once again, you can program the box to be a synth, a fixed box, DJ controller, or any number of devices as long as you are willing to sit and code the programming. The company, I won't try the name again, has some programs available for free to help you get started. The box includes 1.3 inch OLED screen, two USB-C plugs with one being power and the other for your computer, headphone out, MIDI in and out, two line in and out ports and 10 assignable knobs. The total cost of a box is cheap at just £176 and it's available now although the enclosures were originally limited. We all knew it was coming, but the days finally arrived. That's right folks, Spotify finally has done two things we all knew they were going to do, and done them both in the same week. Earlier this year, Spotify had announced that they were going to demonetize any track with less than 1000 streams, and this week was the week it officially happened. It is already hard enough for artists to make music, promote it, get it on playlists, and have people actually listen to their art. Spotify made waves by saying that any song that had a lower stream count than the number of the people that Mr. Beast gave eye surgery to would no longer be paid on the platform. While the demonetization wasn't a surprise, 
price. The timing was as there was no indication when this will be happening. And since everyone should be happy about that news, the next news is guaranteed to make you jump for a joy. Because Spotify also announced this week they've integrated AI into the platform. Users can create custom playlists by describing a playlist they want to listen to. The LLM then creates the list and presents you with a playlist of exactly what you were asking for. Or at least that is how it's supposed to work if it is not hallucinating. The tool is still in beta and won't produce results for non-music related prompts like current events or specific brands. And it is only available in the UK and Australia at this time and no word on when it will roll out worldwide. So we will see how users in those markets take to the new feature first. If you are down under or the UK and have the able to test this, let me know in the comments below what you think. If you are tired of hearing all the news stories that bring up AI, this next study should help you feel a bit better. Conducted by the Sound Out and Stepna Arnold Music in the US, the study shows that AI while good at producing music by numbers, still struggles to produce truly emotional music. Humans are just better at it and still hold the edge for emotional accuracy and appeal, especially in producing music for brands. While the study does show that AI has a ways to go in terms of full production of music, there are advantages of using it as a collaborative tool for producers. The study directors did say that humans plus AI could prove to be a powerful combination when it came to producing emotional correct and appealing music. So we are just creators now. Have you ever been to Chechnya? Me neither. I also guess I probably won't be visiting there anytime soon as the government there has decided that the only legal music can be played from 80 to 116 BPM. Down tempo. Ooh. No, I'm not kidding. The local Russian government's culture minister has decided the best way to protect the regional musicians is to ban any music that isn't played at that tempo. They believe that music should conform to the Chechen mentality and any music played outside those BPMs will be banned from public performance starting June 1st. Artists have been told to rewrite their music or face penalties of fines and jail time for any performances of non-conforming music. It is definitely a strange way to protect your culture. Humans have had a fascination with all things mushroom related for thousands of years maybe? With the first record of mushrooms used in 5300 year old mummy in Egypt, our relation to the fungi has been one of the coexistence. Producer Brian de Souza has decided to take his fascination of the species to the next level. With his upcoming show on April 19th, Brian and several contributing artists will present Biosonification, where they plan to plug into the mycelial network to create interesting sonic concepts. First AI now fungi coming after our music. Stop it! His custom modular scent will plug into the various mushrooms to produce new and interesting sounds. By modulating the MIDI and CV signals through the electrical pathways the mushrooms have. By doing this through several species of the fungi, the team will produce a natural symphony of sounds all created by the mushrooms themselves. He is hoping this will spark interest in using more natural elements for creative works in the future and experimentation with how life can truly directly influence music. From using nature to help make music, to using exercise and music to help people, our next news story by the time this airs will have already happened. On April 20th, the London Marathon will have been run and the middle of the pack, Gus Fraser, a tech entrepreneur from Jersey, will be DJing the whole day. The plan is for him to run and DJ for the entire race and estimates he will complete with the marathon in just under 5 hours. I can't even DJ for 5 hours. It's tiring, yo. By doing this, he will set a new record for the fastest marathon whilst DJing. Hold on, that's a real record they keep track of. For real. There is something like that. I command Gus for carrying the 8 kilograms of equipment strapped around his neck for 26 miles. What is this, like 40 kilometers? For the rest of the world? Yeah? All of this is done for raising money for cancer research in the UK. Bravo Gus! And we hope you get that time. Hit me up if you need some tips. How old is too old for techno? 
trick question because you are never old for techno. Nick Hayes, a 66 year old hard techno artist, also known as the last DJ, <laughs> what a fitting name, wants to remind us all that age is just a number and techno is a lifestyle. Creating music from his home in pristine office style studio environment, Nick doesn't care too much about looking the part of a techno artist. His concern is all about sounds, and sounds are hard. He posts regularly his review of hardware pieces and also tips and tricks, like how to make a pounding kick drum and how to make a miniature techno pony ride. And what? If you want to check him out, you can find him on all platforms. Yes, even TikTok. I think this means it's time for all the young people to start leaving the platform now that Crown Pie is around. Either that, or he's more metal than that 20 year old hanging on the corner in his tight black jeans. Either way, this should make you feel more comfortable with sharing your own art with the world. Because if you can do it, you definitely can too. Although now we are being a bit ageist, he's probably better than most of us. And on this note, I thank you for tuning in and coming along with us as we cover new stories and hope you tune in again next time.